on with learning target 3b in this video and in this part two we're going to learn how to solve a system of inequalities that has both a linear and an absolute value function in that so in part one of this video we looked at systems of inequalities that had two linear functions so both of our graphs were straight lines and we identified our slope and our y-intercept to be able to graph those and in this video we're going to see well what happens if i still have one of those inequalities that's a linear function and then one of those inequalities, what if that becomes an absolute value? So let's look at our first example here. So in example one, we have a system of inequalities. The first one is y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x. And our second function that we'll be graphing is y is less than x over two plus four. So we have to identify, well, what are these graphs going to look like? Why don't you guys pause the video right now and determine for both of these uh, inequalities in our system if the shape of the graph will be sol or if the shape of the graph will be a straight line or a v-shaped graph, if the line will be solid or dotted, and then if we'll have to shade or not. So let's check this. So for our first inequality here of y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x, we are going to have a v-shaped graph on here since we have an absolute value that boundary line is going to be solid since we have that equals two bar on our inequality. And since we have an inequality, we will also be shading on this graph. So let's look at how to graph this guy. Well here, I don't actually have any transformations because I just have the parent function of the absolute value of x. And so since I have no transformations then, there's nothing that I need to apply to my start points Instead, I can just use those start points exactly how they are and plot those. So again, our start points for an absolute value are 1 comma 1, 0 comma 0, and negative 1 comma 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those. If I plot those, I will get this V-shaped graph with my vertex at the origin. And since this is going to be a solid line, I do want to go ahead and insert my entire graph into this. So if I insert both branches of our graph here, and I wanna make sure of course that I'm extending it all the way because I'm not sure where these two lines are gonna intersect. Oops, let's make sure it actually goes through the two points. There we go, and I'm gonna make this just a little bit thicker so that we can see it. So we wanna make sure we're extending our graph as much as possible in case they intersect a little bit further out than we anticipated. And then, of course, we need the other branch on our graph here. So we have that guy, and I'll extend that just as far as I did on the other one. So there's the graph of our boundary line, or our boundary absolute value. And the next thing I need to do is I need to determine the shading, since I have an inequality sign. So we're going to go ahead and test a point. But in this case, I can't test 0, 0 anymore, because 0, 0 is actually on the graph that I've already graphed. It's on my boundary line here. So I need to pick another point that is not on my boundary line to graph. I'm going to go ahead and use 1 comma 2. So 1 comma 2, I'm going to put an x where it would be on my graph, would be right here. And if I test 1 comma 2, I can do that because it's not on my boundary line. I'm going to sub that into my inequality and check it, making sure to sub in the 2 for the y value. And I'm asking myself the question, is 2 bigger than or equal to the absolute value of 1? And in this case, that is a true statement. 2 is greater than or equal to 1. If we were to simplify this down, whoops, greater than or equal to 1. So since that is a true statement, then we want to shade where that point is. So we're going to be shading inside this absolute value. So we'd be shading on the pizza slice then. Since this is a system of equations, my final answer is not just where the first one is shaded or where the second one is shaded, but where the two graphs overlap in their shading on this. So instead of making this very cumbersome right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some arrows that would represent where the shading would go. So all of these arrows would be, or all the shading would be inside the absolute value here. So I have arrows that are pointing inward. Now let's look at our second inequality. So this guy is gonna be a linear function. We are going to get a straight line as our graph. It will be a dotted line since we don't have that equals two bar on there. And since we have an inequality, we will need to make sure that we are shading as well. 
Now, right now how X over 2 is written, that looks a little bit funky than what we're used to seeing, but I can really rewrite that X over 2 as 1 over 2 times X. And the reason I can do that is in front of my X here in the numerator, I actually have that invisible 1, and I can rewrite instead of being X over 2 as a 1 half times that X, and then of course I still have the plus 4. The reason I did this is it's a little bit easier to identify our slope and our y-intercept from here. Our slope is going to be a 1 over 2 or 1 half, and our y-intercept is going to be at 0 comma 4. We can go ahead and plot these on our graph, so I'm up here at 0, 4. And then with a slope of 1 over 2, that tells me I'm going up 1 and then to the right 2. I'd go up 1 and to the right 2. We can see that eventually these are going to intersect, but I might need to extend that graph even more. For now, I'm going to go ahead and fill in our dotted line here, or our dashed line for this linear function, to the best of my abilities, of course, without a straight edge. And if I keep doing this, it looks like it eventually does intersect, but I'm probably going to want to extend this absolute value because I really need to see where these graphs are intersecting. And I'm going to keep dashing, having the dashed line go all the way down here. Now, if I edit that again, let's see if I can click into that. Oh, good, I can. And I'm going to make sure I extend that all the way, even though I'm writing over some of my work, just because we can shade inside the V, but I have to still figure out what's going on with the blue line. So the next step on this, guys, I need to test a point. So for our linear function here, I can actually test 0, 0 since that graph does not run through the origin. And when I test 0, 0, I'm asking myself the question, is 0 less than 1 half times 0 plus 4? Simplifying that down, I would get 0 less than 4. That is a true statement as well, which means I want to shade towards my test point. But this time I tested 0, 0, which means I'm going to be shading below the blue line here. So I'm going to draw arrows to represent that I want to shade for this uh, linear function below that line. Now since this is a system, I want my answers to overlap. So I need my shading to be where it's inside the V, but it's also below that blue line, which means my final answer then is going to be everything that's inside the V, but below this blue line right here on my graph. And I'll get that a little bit more up here as well. So just like we saw in part one, we're going to have a bunch of shading going on here, but it's going to be helpful to just shade our final answer so that our graphs don't look too cumbersome. And I think it's helpful then to use these arrows to kind of point out, well, where's one of these functions shading and then see where the other function is shading. And then we're looking for where those two functions overlap. And so for this example, I needed to be on the pizza slice. So I needed to be inside this purple V but I also want it to be below this linear function, which is my blue dotted line. So that means I just have this little segment right there that's inside or on the pizza slice, but still below that blue line. Okay, let's look at another example. So in example two here, we have this system y is less than five, and we have y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus three. So let's take these one at a time. Because ultimately what we're doing here is we're just putting two problems onto the same graph here and seeing where they overlap and intersect. So for this first function, we have y is less than 5. What type of graph will this create? So this is going to be a straight line, and it's going to be a horizontal line since I just have a y in my equation and no x's. Now to graph a horizontal line, I can remember that the slope is equal to 0. And any two points on this line would always have a y coordinate of 5, and an x coordinate could be any number. So I'm going to go ahead and use 0, comma 5, and why don't I use 3, comma 5? So I can go ahead and plot those points. So I'm up here at 0, 5, and 3, 5. Will this line be solid or dotted? In this case, I'm going to have a dotted or a dashed line since I have a strictly less than inequality. So to the best of my ability, I'm going to make oops, this horizontal dash line going through those two points right here. And again, I might have to extend this further when we graph the other function, 
but for now I'm going to leave it like that. Now the last thing we need to do with this part of the problem is test a point on here. So we can go ahead and test 0, 0. Why don't you guys test 0, 0 and pause the video and determine if that will be a true or a false statement, then figure out if we will be shading that above or below the line. So if we test 0, 0, I'm checking to see is 0 less than 5. Since there's no x place to sub in, I'm just subbing in the 0 for y. 0 is less than 5, so this is a true statement which means that wherever 0, 0 is, since that's our test point, that's the side that I'm going to shade on, which means I will be shading below this purple line then. And I'm not going to go ahead and shade the whole thing in because I still need to graph my other function as well, so I just want to have those arrows there to remind me what direction I'll want to look at when I figure out my overall shading. For our other function, we have y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. What type of graph shape are we going to get for this function? So for this function we are going to get a v-shaped graph since we have an absolute value. Why don't you guys pause the video right now, list your transformations, list your start points, and then figure out what your final points will be after you apply those transformations. So to check this I have only one transformation which is going down 3. That means I subtract 3 to all of the y's. My start points are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, comma 1. If I subtract 3 to all the y's, the x's will be staying the same, so I can go ahead and rewrite all of those coordinates. 1 minus 3 will give us a negative 2, 0 minus 3 will give us a negative 3, and then again 1 minus 3 will give us that negative 2. From here I can plot these, so I'm at negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, and 1, negative 2. Well, I have a solid or a dotted line. So in this case I will have a solid line since I have the equals 2 bar. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my two branches into this graph. So I'm going to have one that's going up and to the right. And it looks like I extended my graph, I think, all the way. I might need to extend that purple line a little bit more. I want to kind of extend this V-shape just in case we need to make that a little bit thicker. And let's insert our other line as well. So if we insert our left branch, oops, I have this guy going up and to the left from here. There we go. So this guy curves all the way around. And it looks like I'm going to have to extend the purple line for sure on the left hand side there. Let's make that a little bit thicker. So I've got my absolute value graphed. Whoops. There we go. Jumped problems there. I am going to extend this purple line out ever so slightly more just so that I can really see where they intersect then and erase those arrows on there. Since those arrows, since that line does keep going. Now for this absolute value graph, I still need to figure out what's going on with the shading. So why don't you guys pause the video right now and test a point to determine the shading. So I'm going to go ahead and test 0, 0 since it is not on my boundary line here. And when I test 0, 0, I get is 0 less than or equal to the absolute value of 0 oops, minus 3. Simplifying that down, I'm looking at is 0 less than or equal to negative 3? Is that a true or a false statement? So this is a false statement. 0 is definitely not less than a negative number. And so since this is a false statement, this means that I don't want to shade where the test point is. So I will not be shading inside the pizza slice. Instead, I want to shade outside. So I'm going to be shading outside this V, and not only on the left side, but also on the right side as well. I'm going to put quite a few arrows here so we can really see that direction of the shading. So we'll be all of this on the whole, uh, whole rest of the pizza there, or on that majority of that pizza. Since this though is a system of inequalities, we're looking for where our final two answers overlap. So for the blue graph, for our absolute value, we're on the majority of the pizza down here. But for the purple line, I'm below that purple line. So what that means then is we get a large region here. And I'm going to make this a little bit thicker so it goes a little bit faster here. So we have all of this 
that's below or outside the blue line, below the purple line. On the left hand side and on the right hand side, we have all of this over here that's below or below both the purple and the blue line. We get all of that there. Technically, it would even overlap into all of our work over here as well. And so all of this yellow highlighted region then would be our final answer as it gets infinitely close to both the blue and the purple line there. So we have to make sure we're both outside, oops, that we are outside, not those two, we wanna make sure we're below the purple line. And then outside the blue line as well. So we get quite a large region for that one. Now let's look at our last example. So here we have y is less than the absolute value of x minus two. That will be the first line that we graph. And then we also have y is less than or equal to negative three x minus two. I might need to scroll down just so that I have enough space. What I want you guys to do right now is pause the video and graph the first inequality here. So graph y is less than the absolute value of x minus two. And think about will that graph be a straight line or a v-shaped graph? Will our boundary line be solid or dotted? And how will the shading work for that one? So why don't you guys graph that first one and then we'll check it together. So for this guy, since I have absolute values, I have a V-shaped graph. We have one transformation, which is going to the right two, which means we are going to be adding two to all of those X's. My start points for my absolute value are one comma one, zero comma zero, and negative one comma positive one, there we go. When we go to the right two, we're adding two to all the X's. So adding two to one, I'm at three comma one. Remember all the Y's are staying the same. I'm at, whoops, that was supposed to be a two. I'm at two comma zero. And lastly, negative one comma one is going to go to one comma one there. So we can plot these points here. So we're at three comma one, two comma zero and one comma one. So I have my V shape that's been shifted to the right too. In this case, I have a dotted line. So not only do I write that down to remind myself, but I also wanna make sure my graph actually has a dotted line for the boundary line. We've seen before that these graphs intersect at some funky places. So I'm gonna go off the graph a little bit on here. Oops, and that's not really looking like a straight line. Let's fix that the angle, there we go. It's a little bit better. Of course, if I had a straight edge or a ruler to use, that would be best, just to make sure that there's my V. When we go ahead to test a point here, I can test zero, zero, since zero, zero is not on that boundary line. So if we test zero, zero, I'm asking myself the question, is zero less than the absolute value of zero, minus two. Simplifying that down, the absolute, or zero minus two is negative two, but we're taking the absolute value of that. So I get left with, is zero less than two? That is a true statement. Oops. So what that means then is I wanna to shade towards that test point. So since zero, zero is right here at the origin, I'll put a red X there to remind me. I'm gonna shade outside this pizza slice. So I'm going to shade all of this that would be at the bottom. But because I have my other graph, I don't want to shade it all yet. I'm just going to draw a couple arrows on here to remind me of the direction of the shading. And now we need to graph our other inequality. So for our second inequality, we have y is less than or equal to negative 3x minus 2. I want you guys to do the same thing again. Pause the video, and why don't you guys graph this one and figure out what the shape is, will the boundary line be solid or dotted, and then also determine the shading. So for this guy, we will have a linear function since we have no absolute values. I have a slope here of negative three, well, negative three. I have a y-intercept of zero comma negative two. This will be a solid line since we have that equals two bar. So let's go ahead and plot that. So I'm in zero, negative two. Negative three, I could rewrite this as negative three over one. 
and then that negative three tells me I'm going down three and then to the right one. I could also go up three and to the left one from here. I could do it a couple more times to really see the shape of this graph. But I have enough points on here that I can insert my straight line. So why don't we insert that line that runs through these two points. Oops. And extend it over our entire graph, making sure it goes all the way up as well as all the way down. Make that just a little bit thicker so we can see the line for sure. And it is solid because I have that equals to bar. From here, we do have to determine the shading. So we could test zero, zero. That will work since that boundary line does not run through there. So if we're testing zero, zero, oops, there we go. We have is zero less than or equal to negative three times zero minus two. So in this case, I get is zero less than or equal to negative two. And this is a false statement. Zero is not smaller than negative two. What that means is that I want to shade opposite the test point. So since the test point is to the right of this line, I will be shading to the left of this line. Now, since our final answer is where these two regions overlap, then I'm interested in where I have both the blue arrows and the purple arrows. And so in this case, that means I'm going to be on the big pizza slice, but I have to be to the left of the blue line. So I really only get this left section of the graph over here. So I kind of did an outline of it. Now I'm going to go back in and shade all of this. So we still get quite a large area here. So I'm outside the V or on the big part of the pizza slice. And I am also then to the left of that blue line on there. And that will be our final region. And it does keep going forever and ever. These are all infinite regions on here since our lines keep going forever and ever. So if we were to keep drawing this purple line up, we would still have even more of this graph way up here as well. So there's a couple examples of not only a system of inequalities, but combining what happens and what kind of funky shapes do we get when I have a system where one is an absolute value inequality, so we have that V shape on our graph, and then one is a linear inequality where we're getting that straight line.